Survivor Friday. I am Joe Dombrowski. Thank you so much for joining us. Another exciting edition as we are coming your way from historic center stage, Atlanta GA for six-man tag team action. Let's go to Nick Lundell. This contest is a six-man tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing team number one, first making his way to the ring, Ken Dixon. And his tag team partners at a combined weight of 555 pounds, Caro Odinson, the end. Well, Ken Dixon is all about strategic intelligence in time of war. He's all about might equals right. And I can't think of a better visual and physical manifestation of that ideology than those two men right there. They are called the end. It is Paro on the left, Odinson on the right. And I'm not sure how you can get more physically imposing than those two athletes, but we may have uh, some front runners to that argument as we send it back to Nick Lundell to meet the opponents in this six-man tag. And their opponents, at a combined weight of 706 pounds, the team of Joe Keys and the Sons of Savagery, S-O-S. It's Bishop Khan on the right, Malcolm Moses on the left. The Sons of Savagery live by the ideology by any means necessary, and their tag team partner, Joe Keys, he enjoys the finer things in life, by society, yachts, expensive cars, women, expensive drinks. Uh, he's all about that that party socialite type mentality that I'm not sure that the SOS are much the party goers, easygoing individuals, but Joe Keen certainly knows how to recruit a great tag team by his side. And clearly Keith and Dixon have brought the reinforcements. I can't remember an episode of Future Bonner that had this much meat, this much humanity in the ring at the exact same time. And you feel almost any second this thing could explode. We'll see how Dixon and Keyes can do as team leaders as referee Becky Phillips signals for the Code of Honor. And you knew it wouldn't take much for the explosion to commence. One glance, and we're off to fighting. And good luck, Phillips, keep control of this matchup as things move on. It's Keys and Dixon, two future of honor stalwarts, starting things out one on one. What an exciting time it is to be a part of Future of Honor. We're all excited about all the news and updates surrounding Future of Honor Season 1. The expansion continues in our Futures division as talent keeps coming out of the woodwork looking to prove themselves as Keys wide base on that cover but only gets a count of two. And it has never been more competitive, never been more exciting in Future of Honor Joe Keyes gets sent into very disadvantageous territory, surrounded by Dixon and the end. And you see Odinson grabbed at Keyes, and Keyes immediately gets defensive and starts fighting the world. He'll have to to survive here, as now Ken Dixon tags in Perro, and Perro goes right for the Sons of Savagery. Still upset in the way this matchup started, and 300 pounder barrels over Joe Keyes. It comes Odinson as well. You see the tag team cohesion of the end. They hold numerous regional tag team championships. And it's for reasons like that, the power slam, the senton, Joe Keyes had nowhere to go, and Dixon picks his opportunity, tag back in, immediately goes to the cover. Dixon certainly wants the victory and the spoils in this matchup. Ken Dixon, the former defense contractor who all, who knows all too well about strategy, knows all too well about the art of war, and certainly none too impressed by Joe Keyes thus far on the early go, who is isolated and just outnumbered. Two count only, and based on who those numbers were, it might have felt like five or six on one. You were Joe Keyes. 
Dixon with key center of the ring, textbook suplex. Beautifully done. Notice how Dixon, as he gets another near fall, keeps his body between Joe Keys and Joe Keys' corner. Dixon getting a bit of attitude with the official. I would not advise that. Referees here in Ring of Honor have more authority and power than ever, and they're not afraid to flex to uphold the rules that a tag has been made. Malcolm Moses unloading. And he is the fire of the group. And here comes Bishop Khan, who many call the sadist. He's uh, quiet by nature, but if you rise that temper, man, you will get a very, very ugly side of him. As SOS, that may be what Ken Dixon will be calling out for before it's done. Thanks to the Sons of Savagery as Joe Keys is perched high above. Oh, nobody there in the splash. Dixon has a, a couple of studs trying to uh, reach out for a tag on his end. Paraway, former Division I college football player, 6'6", 300 pounds. Odinson, 6'4", 265. They've, they've won titles and tournaments from here to Japan, but will they be able to get back in this thing legally? Meanwhile, Joe Keyes is reaching for Bishop and Malcolm. And you see the end may have caused the end for Joe Key's hopes as they take Joe Key's partners away. Allowing Dixon now. Wait, Joe Key's counter, Sunset Flip, can he get him over? It's a battle of balance and leverage. Dixon holding on to Odinson. <laughs> a tackle from the side by Malcolm Moses. Ken Dixon's reinforcement gets neutralized and they're fighting on the floor now. Here comes Bishop Khan to take out Perro. Joe Keys gets the sunset flip. He's got a trap and he got him. Here are your winners, the team of SOS and Joe Keys. Well, Dixon had his contingency plan. Perro was watching, Odinson was watching, but the SOS, any means necessary, neutralized their competition. Joe Keys hooked in that sunset flip tight. Legs draped over the shoulders. Dixon had nowhere he could go, and it's a big six-man tag team win for Joe Keys and the Sons of Savagery. That'll do it for Future Bonner Friday this week. My name is Joe Dombrowski. Thank you so much for being a part of the ever-expanding Future Bonner. We will see you next week. <laughs>